Hey guys, welcome back. I just want to do a quick overview of this Mesa 7i76 ED board that I'm using for my uh, lathe build. The 7i76 ED board is very similar to the 7i76 E board. Um, they're both Ethernet boards, that's what the E stands for, because there's also a 7i76 parallel port version, and there's also a 7i76 D version of the parallel port ver uh, variant that has the syncing outputs. So the difference between the E and the ED, or the 7i76 proper and the 7i76D, are that the outputs on the Ds are syncing outputs, whereas the 7i76 and the 7i76E are sourcing outputs. So what that means is, on these last two sockets here, these are all of your outputs. So from this location across to here to here, these two on the 7i76E will provide 24 volt positive output to your relay or device. The D is a syncing output, which means your relay or device gets the 24 volt into the device from your power supply. And then the ground or the zero volt common will go to the output pins here. So when the output is triggered, it enables the ground return, not the 24 volt going out to the device. It's 24, it's the 24 volt coming back into here as common. So that's the that's the only major difference. The inputs are always syncing inputs. So you have a device, say you have a potentiometer or you have a button. The button will take the 24 volt from your power supply into the button, come out of the button, go into one of the inputs, and that will provide the ground for the pathway to trigger the switch to go true. So your input plugs are down here and you've got, they're, they're labeled if you look at the board closely. You could see down in a little valley there if this thing would focus. In the valley here, you see in zero and then up on top in 16. And then as you go across, you'll see in 15, in 31, out 8. Down here, you'll see if you can get the light in there. Out 0, out 7, out 8, to out 15. So you have 32 inputs and 16 outputs that you can define. The first four inputs are able to be used as analog inputs. So again, you can hook up a potentiometer and use the potentiometer with the variable resistance going into pin one, two, three, and four, or in the case of, you know, because computer zero, one, two, and three. The first four, you could put variable voltage devices onto and control them that way. There's, uh, there's also a driver setting for allowing two uh, manual pulse generator encoders to be placed on to these four pins here. So 16, 17, 18, 19, which would be 17, 18, 19, and 20 in the real world because of, you know, because, because input zero is, is input one. So you can have, uh, jog wheel 100 pulse per revolution with an ab input signal and as you turn the wheel it triggers ab 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 and it gives you the resolution here and here so you can hook up two jog wheels or you can have uh you know you can you can hook up a couple different types of encoders to here the Step gens are all up in this section here. Each of these plugs is removable, 
and each removable plug is its own individual step gen. So on each of these, you'll have a ground source, a five volt positive. So your ground is your first pin, five volt positive on the last pin of each plug. And then in between, you've got your step and direction hookups for each one. You've got four across here, and then you've got the fifth one down here. So this is a five axis board. You can command and control a five axis machine with just this board. Next to that, we have a, uh, an encoder input, and we also have an RS-422 uh, input, or I.O. really. So you can hook up an RS-422 device with the, was it, the TX and RX signals. And then here you can hook up uh, an encoder with your AB phase and your Z phase. So this is good for um, spindle encoders where you need something high speed and you need it with an index pulse to pick up the location of the home position of your encoder in order to synchronize your spindle for threading. This little socket here, this can, this can kind of throw you off a little bit because this little socket here is generally speaking where you would put in your 24 volt power supply. So you have 24 volt positive on the first two pins and then your zero volt common on the last two pins. So I put my 24 volt here and here, and then I use the outside pins to jump from here to the last pin on this plug, 24 volt from here to the fifth pin on this plug. If you look at the instructions for the Mesa 7i7-6 boards, you'll see why. The 24 volt in coming to here provides what they call V in. Um, with this jumper in the left position, which is where it is from the factory, these four pins are linked to this fifth pin. So when you plug 24 volt, 24 volt, now you've got four additional 24 volt supplies sharing the same power supply and you can use that for um, limit switches and things like that but what it also does is it powers by doing it this way not only does it power this upper section here for the five volts it actually steps down the 24 volts to five volts along these guys but it also provides your field io power so it powers all of the required signals for your inputs and outputs. If you move this jumper, it'll divide up your VN and these four guys here. So you'd have to you'd have to power it differently than the way I do it. But I have tried other ways. I've just tried putting 24 volts to here, and it doesn't power here. I've tried putting 24 volts to here, and it doesn't power there. So um, I just run the little jumpers, like I said, from there across. And then these two, these two screws, so you got one, two, and three. On the newer boards, you've got ground source for one, two, and three. So these three pins here are all common for general I.O. return. So you got... You know, you'll have, um, if you need an extra common somewhere, you could always tie into one of those. And then this one here, this plug is for analog spindle. And if you look, it even says analog spindle control. So your first three pins here are basically for hooking up your VFD uh, potentiometer. So you've got your ground, you've got your variable speed, and then you've got your um, full voltage. So let's say 10 volts is uh, so common, 10 volt, and then in between you'd have your variable, your zero to 10 volt 
output going to your analog input on your VFD. And then you've got um, direction and enable hookups here. There is one pin that doesn't get used. And then you have, um, yeah, you have your direction, your enable, this pin's not used, and then you have your basically potentiometer hookup. Here we've got two 26 pin headers that we can use to attach additional I.O. boards, such as the Mesa 7i85, which will give you basically more I.O. that you can use for, again, general inputs, outputs, uh, some encoders, whatnot. You can branch off and you can have two additional boards hooked up to this board. So not only do you get all of this stuff here, but you also get two additional you can hook up here. This little green guy here is, is a 5-volt input. So if you didn't want to power everything off of the 24-volt source, you could power it off of here if you wanted to. That would provide power for here. But I, I haven't gotten into that. If you just want to run the board as a for testing purposes to get it to communicate to your computer before you commit to installing it into your machine. You can hook up five volts to here, you can plug in your ethernet port and you can get this section working. There are additional jumpers. I haven't really gotten too far into what they do, but this jumper right here, W3, if we look somewhere, it's labeled here down at the bottom. Hard to see, but See, when you tilt it into the light there, W3. So this, this guy right here. If you want to have Wi-Fi and wired communication on the same computer at the same time, you would move that W3, that W3 jumper from the current position to the up position. So you just move it over, you know, move it over one pin. And what that'll do is it'll change the base IP address of this card to 10.10.10.10 and then in your wired network setting you would set your computer to 10.10.10.2 with a subnet of 255.255.255.0 with no gateway. If you put a gateway then it will it will not let you have simultaneous Wi-Fi and wired connection. So that's uh, that's basically it for what this card will do. If you look at the Mesa documentation, it breaks it down a little bit better. There's also schematics online that show you all of the different pin configurations. Um, so I'm not going to get too far into it. Just to just know you got your inputs, outputs, your field I/O spindle, um, step gens, your encoder, RS-422, and then you've got some addition. You've got your incoming power here as well. So that's, uh, that's basically it. This uh, video took a little longer than I thought it would, but I hope this gives you a little bit of a brief overview of what you're going to be dealing with you do have to be careful the ios are um, not very powerful so don't try to run anything directly off of an output aside from a relay coil don't try to hook these directly to a you know to a spindle break or something because just because you can source 24 volts you can't source a lot of amperage it's only 300 uh, milliamps per uh, per output so be careful with that because you can burn these out pretty quickly so again thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the video i uh, hope it kind of demystified this a little bit because the first time i saw one of these i looked and said boy oh boy there's a whole bunch of stuff i know nothing about so um i'm just trying to just trying to help you guys out with all the with all the headaches that i had to endure on the first couple of months of my builds. So 
Thanks for watching. Uh, please be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I did notice uh, in my analytics that a lot of you guys that are watching the videos, 75% of you have not subscribed to the channel. So please, please, please do that. And um, we'll see you soon.